So I really want to kind of get it to where, probably start with Amanda just to talk a little bit about, you know, how social media has helped you with your business and your clients. Sure. Um, this one? That one. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have, is this on? Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, so I have recently started a, what we're calling a social PR agency. My background, my, I have a foundation in, in traditional public relations, and that's what I have my degree in, what I've been working in, in different realms from healthcare to insurance to political um, campaigns. And, but it's always been the, the traditional PR. And over the last few years, you, although traditional PR is still really important, you can't really have uh, just a press release that goes out and just do media relations in the traditional sense anymore. And so all those things I think are still very important, but you have to incorporate and integrate a traditional PR plan with a social media plan as well, which should be integrated with a marketing plan and an advertising campaign. So it all works together, and I think that that's, that's where um, I think there's still a place for all those different pieces. I don't think the press release is going to die like a lot of people in my industry say that it will. I, I think it's still, it still has its place, but it, you have to integrate it with other, with other things. And so with social media, that's just so many more tools and so many great ways that you can reach all your different audiences. You still have people that read the newspaper every day. You can't forget about them. You have people now that are on Facebook and Twitter, and so you can reach them there too. So it's just another way to reach all of your different audiences. Okay. Um, thanks for having me here today. Uh, I wanted to ask a question before I start talking about Blue Cross, and that is, is anyone here engaging in back-channel discussion so far? <laughs> Don? Um, back-channel discussion is essentially an online conversation while somebody's speaking in real time. So this is happening more and more where somebody would be presenting or at a conference, and there are several discussions going on online with people on Twitter and other channels. Um, quite frankly, you know, giving their viewpoints of how the speaker's doing, so it could go against you, so that's why I have to make sure who's doing that right now. <laughs> Is that bad or good? It can be, it can go either way for you. Um, but as Jerry said, I'm pretty new still to Blue Cross, I'm still using that extensively. I don't know where that, where that cutoff is, maybe a year. Um, and we just launched in June, and our initial strategy was social networking to get that up and running. Um, and as he mentioned, um, we focused on Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn to some extent, and YouTube. We still have a lot of work to do in organizing our content, um, but we feel like we've gotten off to a good start. Uh, some of the things that we're looking to do with our social strategy, um, we want to first and foremost listen to what people are saying about the brand. Um, if you listen and you monitor what's going on, um, out there in the social space, you can really get some good insights that can help you understand the thought process that's going on about your brand and also correct um, any things that are incorrect um, that people are saying. Um, secondly, it really helps us achieve our mission to engage Tennessee communities of like-minded people around health and wellness activities. And one of the greatest things so far that we've initiated is um, Meetup. And we are a sponsor of Meetup. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's a great platform. Um, there's about seven million members uh, that use Meetup, and they go online, they organize their Meetup, they have events in their local communities, and now it's also going uh, more in a global sense where you can join Meetups outside of your communities. Um, and so far we have one pilot group that started, Scenic Cycling in Chattanooga, and our organizer is an employee of Blue Cross, but we open this up to anyone. Um, we encourage you know, non-employees and, and members at large to create their own Meetup around health and wellness. So I think there's about 51 members so far in this group. Um, I think it launched sometime after June even, and he's had great momentum. Um, he's had over like 15 meetups so far, and everybody in the group is really enjoying it. So we're looking forward to promoting this more and, and using it more extensively to help us accomplish that goal. Um, we also use this to build relationships with our members. I mean, our goal is to uh, really humanize our brand and start conversations that are gonna help us ultimately um, sell products and services. But first and foremost, it's about improving the healthcare experience for our members, our employees, and for anyone who's interested in learning more. Um, we just uh, recently conducted a survey and um, about 60% of people said that our participation 
in social media and our presence on Facebook and some of these other channels has uh, greatly improved their perception of us. So we will certainly continue down this, down this path. Thank you. I'm Strat Parrot with uh, Juncture Marketing and Advertising. And uh, the way that we've utilized social media in our first year in business, um, which was two years ago now, uh, was primarily to engage an audience and, and build a customer base and show that social media actually had added value in, in building a community and being utilized as business. I did a little something dangerous that I don't really recommend anybody to do and that's using social media solely for your, your purposes of, of marketing. Um, it was a, a very um, interesting year the first year and, and I did accomplish uh, a lot of things uh, as well as working with, with several clients in town like the Hunter and the Creative Discovery Museum on some of their fundraising activities and using social media to engage the, the participants and raise awareness of the campaigns that were going on. Um, and uh, you know, through those different avenues, we developed some uh, strategies at each of the locations to um, work with, with their main audience and uh, get out their message and their story, which is something that's a, a little bit different between uh, business and nonprofit is oftentimes in nonprofit or smaller businesses, you're wanting to tell your story rather than um, you know, broadcast what it is that you do and, and treat it as a sales tool. Um, because uh, social media is not going to be the, the answer to, to showing some big return on investment. That's a big question that comes up a lot is how do I get my return from social media? And the way you get your return is by building relationships on social media and by nurturing those relationships, then you will see a return. But directly from using um, the social media as an internet marketing tool, um, it's just going to be there to, to build and nurture your relationships. I think the biggest thing with social media has been um, some people are intimidated by it. I have to say right at the very beginning I was one of those. Um, I'm getting better at it, but how Southside uses it mainly is for our clients, but we've most recently had Rob right over there to be our digital marketing manager so that we can better promote Southside um, as well as the clients. And, you know, a lot of our clients, we just use, it's just another aspect of our marketing plan. We incorporate that with traditional media um, as, as well as um, press releases and just anything you can think of. And most recently, we sent out a press release with hyperlinks and things like that in it. And um, it's just amazing the things that you can do now that makes it simple. Our client that we have the most fun with um, has just started a blog. And we joke all the time because, you know, you can have so many words on Twitter. You can have a little more on Facebook. Well, we make him blog, and then we let some, you know, the <laughs> they pick it up for Twitter and Facebook just because he's a little wordy and um, the blog works better for him. But there's just so many things that you can do out there. And from Makefield Farm and Nursery, we've used that. Um, they had no budget, so we had to use social media. Um, and that worked out well for them with their first Mater Olympics. Um, so I'm full of stories, but um, I'll pass it on to John. We'll get the stories later, maybe. My experience with social media has really been eye-opening. Uh, you can get out there and really create a presence for yourself, for your company. And I've talked to a lot of people who say, well, you know, I, I don't have a, I'm a professional, but I don't know how to use it for my company. And, you know, I kind of, it's been said, I should say, that uh, social media is like a cocktail party. You go there to meet people and talk with them. You don't necessarily go there to shout out your message. And what I've discovered is that a number of people and companies that start to get into that space, they, and, and let me preface that by saying that there's not a right way and a wrong way, but there's usually a, a better way, a more effective way to get involved in it. And Going back to what I was saying, the, the I think one of the keys to consider is to not treat it like 
other media, such as print or radio, which is pretty much all one way. You're sending out a message. With social media, the exciting thing is, it allows your audience to talk back. And if you create these channels and don't monitor them, if you automate them and send a message out, it can sometimes backfire on you. I've had uh, work with a number of companies that have done stuff like that, and they go, John, we're, we're, not, we're not seeing anything. And I go on and I look and I go, well, people are talking about you, uh, but you're not listening. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that I always stress is that when you're getting involved in it, that you need to monitor it, you need to listen, and you know, these things, these tools have only been available for, you know, a matter of a few years. You know, think about where it's gonna be the next five, even 10 years down the road. LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter is what everyone talks about, but there's so much more than just that. Um, there are many, many ways in which you can incorporate location-based services uh, to draw people <laughs> for events and PR, and um, just a ton of different ways in which you can incorporate it into your existing business and marketing plan. One of the uh, great things about it is that it levels the playing field. Not everyone has a budget like um, <clears throat> like Unum or other big companies. Uh, we can't all shell out thousands of dollars a month um, to traditional forms of advertising. Uh, and if you're in the yellow pages still, please talk to me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> But Blue Cross has a budget. <laughs> yes, Blue Cross does have a budget. But but if you notice, Blue Cross budgets as well. Blue yeah, Cross is Blue Cross is is launching campaigns and analyzing how they can best reach their audiences. And like I said, leveling the playing field. Um, the smallest uh, one-man shop professional can do the same thing. And people are on there. People are getting on there more and more. And I would just say that. Uh, Getting involved in it now rather than waiting until later is a good thing for you to consider.